Children, they want a Bible, put your hand up. Let us pray while I'm finding the scriptures, amen. Father, you Jesus, thank you, Lord. Jimmy, we pray for this morning. Father, Lord God, we stand for you, my Lord, this morning, Lord God, you sent us, brother, Lord God. You have worked this hard, Lord God, and to share with your people as well. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Father, Lord God, that there's nothing that's carried us there, Lord God, but it comes directly from you, Lord God. We don't need to hear from man this day, Lord God. We need to pray to you, my Lord, my God. Thank so when you, Lord. he starts to pray, Lord God, if you are able, Speak to his heart and mind, Lord God, and use him as a vessel, Lord God, to you this day, Lord God. You, Lord. And we know, Lord God, that your work has its purpose and it won't come back, Lord. And I pray for his brother. I pray for all the people that's in church, Lord God. We give us ears to hear the heart of the same, Lord God. And I will, Lord God, to put it in practice. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 4, chapter 4, and we're reading from verse, from verse 11. Everybody there? Amen. Not that I speak in regard to your need, need, for I have learned to learn in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be obsessed, abased, and I know how to abound in everywhere. And in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. By the new all things, through Christ who strengthens me. See, Paul, right? In many different ways suffered for his faith for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In every situation, Paul still could be content. Why would he be content? Because he wanted to rely on man's strength or his own strength. But Paul was strengthened by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said, I can do all things. I can endure all things because it tries to strengthen me. Remember, Paul suffered persecution, beat, left or dead, Spent years in prison, went hungry, went cold, persecuted many different ways, shipwrecked, but yet he could do it, he could endure it, because his strength come from God. And you know, Paul knew both sides of the coin, right? Because before Paul gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul was a Pharisee, and he would persecute Christians. And he had power and authority as a well-educated man, he had wealth. And they had the Roman governors and the Roman armies behind them. And we persecuted the Christians. Remember, we went through the book of Acts, so they dragged them from their homes and put them in prison. This is the same man. So he knew both sides of the coin. But when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't dependent on the Roman governors and the Roman armies. His faith and his trust was in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he suffered much persecution. But he could go on, he could endure it. Because his strength lay in God. Amen. And to me, you this morning, right? We might be suffering this morning, because sometimes we come into the meetings and we say we're okay. We look okay and we put a smile on. But deep down inside, you know, you might be broken hearted. You might be weak. You might be facing persecution. You might be facing a mountain this morning. You think you're never ever going to get through it. But I want to tell you something this morning to trust the Lord Jesus Christ, because God will always make a way for us. And you know, in the Bible, the word of God, many people suffered. We can read from Genesis, Genesis right through to Revelation. Many, many women in the Bible suffered for their faith. They suffered persecution, the enemy came against them. Impossible situations. We know what they've done. They continued to trust in God. And God always brought them through, always made a way. And I'm here this morning, you think, maybe I'm facing a situation, and there isn't any way. I want to tell you something this morning. We can do all things this morning. Because the Lord Jesus Christ came to meet you this morning. We can endure all things this morning because it's God who strengthens us. And I'm not talking about a physical strength that you go to a gym and lift enough weights. I'm talking about a spiritual strength that could only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I've got three men in the Bible, right? Just quickly. One who suffered persecution more than any other man. One who was weak. And one who faced a mountain. We know these three men continue to trust in God and God made a way out. God delivered them. And then this morning, as I said, you might be weak, you might be persecuted, or you might be facing the mountain. But this morning, we need to trust in God like these men. Now, we're not going to read scripture and verses, I'm just going to quote it. Job, right, in the Bible, was the most persecuted man in the Bible. Now, Job had everything. He had thousands of livestock, no camels, sheep, goats, he had houses, he had land, he had great possessions. He had seven sons, three daughters. 
But Job feared God, he walked with God, and he was a righteous man. He had everything going for him. He rose from one day, the enemy came in, came in like a flood, and took everything Job had. Took his family, took his livestock, his homes was burned up, he lost all his possessions. Though Job even lost his health, and he was sitting in a pile of ashes, covered, it says, with boils and sores. I thought to myself, you know, this man Job must be weak. What he went through, he must be weak. You know, maybe physically Job was weak, but I want to tell you something spiritually, God, uh, Job was strong. He was strong. Because his friends came and gave him the wrong advice. His wife even came and told him, curse God and die. We know what Job said. Do we only worship God in the good times? And sometimes, brothers and sisters, I mean you, when things are going good, when we're on the mountain top, it's easy to praise and worship God. But what when we're persecuted, when we're down in the valley, that's when we need to trust God a lot more and thank to God. And that's what Job done. His faith, his trust, his strength was in God. Job said something, right? In chapter 19, you read it to yourself. Job said, everything Job went through, all the persecution, everything took lost to everything. And Job would still say one thing. He said, I know, he said, my Redeemer loves. I know my Redeemer loves. And there was the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, who strengthened in Job. And we read it, it says, God restored the ring to Job double. Restored the ring back to Job double. The ring they lost, God gave him double. And this morning, brothers and sisters, me and you, we might be facing persecution this morning. The enemy might come against us. Because the Bible says Satan goes round like a roaring lion. And that's the one who persecutes me and you this morning, the enemy. And I'm not talking about, it. some people think, and I think sometimes as well, if we've got a puncture, if a job cancels, if we're arguing with the wife, the children come against us, that's persecution. But what it is, and that's not persecution. That's everyday life. And everybody goes through that. Persecution is when you step out to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the enemy will come against us. Satan will come against us. And he'll use anybody and everybody. He may even use family and friends. They'll say the wrong thing, they will do the wrong things. When you step out to the Lord, the enemy has to far behind that and guarantee you that. So we need to remember one thing. Remember I asked up on a message once and he said, people say things and do things, but remember the, vo the voice behind it, who's behind it? And the Satan is behind it. Remember when Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Persecution comes to everyone else. Because the Bible says in James, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Not if, but when. And there's trials. If you don't go through a trial, brother and sister, this morning, then there's a trial coming for us. But you know something, just like Joe, we have to remember one thing this morning. That we are Redeemer of this morning. We are Redeemer of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who brought us back by his precious blood, who suffered at Calvary, beat unrecognizable, gave his life, died on the cross, was buried and put in a tomb, <coughs> and three days later rose is alive, and he sits at the right hand of God right now, interceding for me and you. This morning, that you strengthened me and you this morning. That you strengthened us, that you brings us through this morning. And this morning, just like Job, we can do all things. Just like Paul said, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and you this morning. Can we say Amen. amen. The book of Judges talks about a man called Gideon. Job was the most persecuted man. This man Gideon said he was the weakest. His tribe was the weakest and he was the weakest of the tribe. But you know something? God does not have the weakness. Because me and you this morning, brothers and sisters, we're weak people in here this morning. We're nothing special this morning, we're weak. But it's God who strengthens me and you this morning. God strengthens me and you and we have to continue to trust in God. See, the, the Bible says God takes the foolish things in the world to shame the wise. And it's not about my strength and your strength this morning. Because we can do nothing. Then the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, we can do a thing. No, as we at the time, right, rebel against God. They're worshipping false idols and false gods and bold statues to Baal. And it's a God to move this hand from the Israelites. The enemy came in and for seven years God's people were severely persecuted. The enemy would come in, they would destroy the crops, they took all the livestock. They always had the victory over God's people. And this went on for seven years. Until finally, the Israelites, God's people, called out to God. They called out to God. You know what happened? I says, God heard the cries. After seven years, I says, God heard the cries. And there's a lesson that this morning we knew. 
Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we can face situations, and you know something, God is the last person we turn to. We can turn to the world, we can turn to friends, and when nothing else works, then we cry out to God. And that's what happened here. For seven years, we were being persecuted by the enemy, but then they called out to God, God and they said, God heard their cries. And I want to tell you something this morning, God hears my cries, and he hears your cries this morning. But sometimes we fail, fail to cry out to God when we go through a trial or a situation. It says the angel of the Lord came to Gideon. Gideon was in a wine press, it says, thrashing out wheat. He was hiding from the enemy. And it says the angel of the Lord was capital H, and it means the Lord, it means Jesus Christ. That's who came to Gideon. And basically they told him that you're going to defeat the enemy. But Gideon said, it's that I'm the weakest. They said, my tribe is here because I'm the weakest. How can I do this? And Gideon asked, asked for a sign. He put out a place and he said, if it is you, Lord, they said, in the morning, they said, let all the ground be wet, they said, but let that place be dry. When Gideon got up in the morning, you know, the ground was saturated around him, but the place was dry. And you know, Gideon still asked again, he said, Lord, they said, tomorrow, he said, please give me another sign, they said. They said, tomorrow, let the place be wet and let all the ground be dry. The opposite. And the same thing happened again. You know, Gideon got up, I said, they destroyed all the altars that false gods. They gathered together 32,000 men of valor. This man was the best of men, best of warriors. 32,000 men. And they were going to fight the enemy. But they said the enemy was like locusts. There were thousands, uncountable. Then God said to Gideon, The men you have are too many, he said. Those who are afraid, he said, tell them to turn back. 22,000 men turn back. Gideon is left with 10,000 men. They went down to a brook to drink from water. And God said to get him again, the men to drink of the certain way he to turn back, because the men are still too many. No, anyway, getting ended up with 300 men. 300 men against, against thousands. This was an impossible situation. You know, God was showing getting something. I do not go on your strength. It's not about the men of valor, but it's about me this morning, and I'm going to give you the victory. And this morning for me and you, brothers and sisters, it's not about your strength this morning, but God gives me and you the victory, by the way, face this morning. You know, getting into the battle, and it destroyed the enemy. And if we read on in the book of Judges, it tells us that Gideon became a mighty man of God. He was the weakest, but yet he became the strongest, because it wasn't his strength, it was the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, the people wanted Gideon to be king, to rule over him. But you know what Gideon said? They said, no. They said, we only had a king who rules, rules over me and you. And they said, that's God, they said. And this morning, brothers and sisters, we need to remember this morning, we have a king that rules over me and you this morning. It leads us and guides us and protects us. And he's the king of kings, he's Lord of lords, and his Lord and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Actually, leads and guides and protects me and you this morning. And through him this morning, we can do all things. Not on our own strength, but of our own strength, we can do nothing. But in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, we can do everything. But when we're weak, that's when the enemy comes in. Remember, even when Jesus fasted for 40 days in the desert, the wilderness, when he was weak, that's when the enemy came in and tried to tempt him. And the enemy, we're weak, brothers and sisters, that's when the enemy will come in. But we remember that where strength this morning comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Samuel 17 talks about a man called David, right? Your David was anointed to be king, but at this time he was a youth, a young boy, attending his father's flock of sheep. His brothers went to war with Saul, King Saul, to fight against the, against the enemy, against the Philistines. And they said, David's father, Jess, told him, go up to the battleground that brings supplies to your brothers. And when David went up, remember, he's a young boy, youth now, he went up to his battleground, and all the army, even King Saul, who was head and shoulders above a brother man, was terrified of this man called Goliath. Goliath was a giant, over nine foot tall, and the people were terrified. And David couldn't understand why they were afraid. And David's words was, no, I'll fight Goliath, I'll beat him. And his brothers got angry, David was brought before Saul, and Saul said, how can you beat Goliath? You're just a youth, you're a young man, how can you do it? Well, David said, when I used to look after the sheep, he said, God would strengthen me. When the lion and when the bear came, I could defeat them, and I will defeat Goliath because God will strengthen me. You know, Saul said, well, go, carry on. Now, I believe one half of Saul expected David to be killed. Saul said, here's my armor, put on the armor. You know, David put on Saul's armor, but you know something in the physical? David couldn't even walk in the armor. He didn't have the strength to even walk in the armor. He had to take it back off. 
laid that on the side, and they said to Goliath, you come against me with javelin and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. And they know something. An impossible situation, but God gave David the victory. He killed Goliath. If you think about it in today's terms, right? How could this be? It would be like putting one of the children into a ring against Tyson Fury. That's what it would be like today. And one of the children to knock Tyson Fury by a punch. But yet, impossible for man, but everything is possible with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here this morning, you might be facing that mountain this morning, you think maybe there's no way through. How am I going to get through this? How am I going to get past it? Well, cast your mind back when you first got saved. Where has God taken you from? What has He taken you through since you've been saved? You know, brothers and sisters, I know you're facing this morning, but I know one thing this morning, we trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord will give us the strength to go through this morning. Yeah. The Israelites, when they left Egypt, did the first obstacle they come to was the Red Sea. The enemy was behind them, the sea in front of them, they had nowhere to go. They were terrified. But God said to them, he said, tell the people to stand still with him today they will see the deliverance of the Lord. The people stood still. God parted the sea and they walked over on dry land and the enemy was destroyed behind them. And to me, you this morning, this is stand still. Stand still this morning and see the, the deliverance of God can bring you through this morning. See, with God, mountains become no leaps. David was nothing, a young man, a young shepherd boy. And then there's in here this morning, you might think, there's nothing that's been here this morning. Uneducated people. But I want to tell you something this morning, we're the most powerful people on planet Earth. Why? Because greater is he who lives in me than you, and he who lives in the world, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And we can do all things this morning, because the Lord Jesus Christ strengthens us. But the strength that the Bible speaks about, right? Well, how do we get the strength? Do we have it? How do we get it? Strength to endure. Strength when we face persecution like Job to continue to trust in God. Strength when we're weak like Gideon. Strength when we face mountains like David. How do we get the strength? Well, you know, David, right, was a mighty man of God. Defeated Goliath, killed thousands of the enemy. But Saul came against David, right? Fear came in and he says, David fled. And we find David now, right, is camped with the enemy. Fear came in, David is weak, he's camped with the enemy. At one point, David was even going to go against God's people and fight with the enemy. But what he tells us what David done, right? It reads in 1 Samuel 13, verse 6. This is what David done. Now, David was greatly distressed for the people, spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. See, David strengthened himself. And the Lord is God. And for me and you this morning, brothers and sisters, we have to strengthen in ourselves, not more family, not more friends, and the Lord God this morning. And the strength that comes from God this morning, the strength that we need this morning, the strength that the Bible speaks about, the strength to endure, strength to overcome, strength to move mountains, strength to encourage, strength to trust, strength to give, strength to receive, strength to go on. But just like Jesus, David, we have to strengthen ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, in God this morning. It's like all the men in the Bible before, who suffered much persecution, much came against them. Like Paul said, I can do all things, I can endure all things, because it's Christ who strengthened me. So how do we strengthen ourselves in God? I was thinking about it, how do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? So I wrote five things down, right? Number one, when the Lord came to Gideon, what was the first thing Gideon said? He said, Lord, I'm weak. And sometimes we put a brave face on, as I said this morning. We have to confess, admit, Lord, I'm weak this morning. Lord, I'm going through a trial this morning. Lord, I'm going through a situation this morning. We have to bring it before the Lord this morning. But sometimes I said we keep to ourselves. And when we're weak, that's when the enemy can get in. And why are we weak? Why are we being weak? Why are we weak? There must be a reason why you're weak this morning. Because once we take our eyes on God and place him on man, then we can solely, the Bible says, drift from God. And sometimes we slowly drift away from God because we're not spending that time seeking God's face daily. We have to admit and confess that we're weak. Number two, we have to pray. If we're not praying, and I'm going to tell you something this morning, you're going to be weak and we're going to achieve, achieve nothing this morning. Because when we pray, that's when we are speaking to God. That's when we are speaking to God when we pray. Pray encourages, pray strengthens, pray moves mountains. 
And we, once we pray, brothers and sisters, God hears our prayers. The prayers of the righteous, the Bible says, avail much. If we're not praying, there's no saying. If we're not praying, we're not staying. We have to quit for the week and we have to ask God and pray. Once we pray to the Lord, then we have to trust God. We have to trust Him that God's going to move, God's going to make a way, God's going to answer the prayer. Remember, Kenny was weak, he confessed, Job was in turmoil, and yet he could pray to God. See, we didn't just pray when things are good, when the good times, but we pray in every single situation. As a body, we pray for many other different situations, and we continue to pray in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we pray, God hears our prayers. We have to trust in God. Sometimes we only see the problem. But I want to tell you something, God sees the beginning, God sees the middle, and God also sees the end. And God's plans is perfect. When we trust in God, God will bring us through to the other side. Number four, we have to read the word of God. Down here this morning, if you're weak, if you're not praying, if you're not trusting, then you're not reading the word of God. Because every answer for every problem that we you face can be found in the word of God can be found in the Bible. Every scripture, everything, for weakness, for persecution, for facing mountains, for trials and for everything, you will find it in the Word of God. You know, when you go to Ikea, right, and buy furniture, it all comes flat back, and they give you instructions how to build it up. Your instructions to build you up can be found in the Bible. Maybe you're feeling broken, if something's broken, you take it to a person and you fix it. The only person can fix me you this morning is the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, we've got to thank God daily. Once we've confessed, once we've prayed, once we've trusted, once we've read up, then we continue to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank Him for His brought us from what He's brought us through. We thank Him for His grace and for His mercy daily. But maybe you're only doing this maybe once a month. Maybe you're only praying, reading, trusting, maybe once a month. Is that right? Maybe once a fortnight. Maybe once a week. How often do we do this? Let me tell you some brothers and sisters, if you're weak in here this morning, if you're weak, then you're not doing it daily, because that's the something that's done daily. Daily, we have to pray, we have to read, we have to trust in God daily. It's every single day of life. No one's the week, no one's the month, no one's the fortnight, but daily. You know, when God fed this life in the desert, like the manna from heaven, daily, God gave him enough to sustain him. And then the manna was fresh every single day. It was fresh. Some of the people gathered enough for two days. We know when they got up in the morning, the stuff they gathered was stale, it wasn't any good, it was bad. And we kind of love in yesterday's manner. God's word has to be fresh for me new daily. See, we meet with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a relationship. And we're trusting God, we're learning, we're praying, we're speaking to Him. When we read the word of God, God is speaking to us daily, refreshed in the things of God. We can't love in yesterday's manner. We can't love in past feelings or past times. I remember years ago when I was first saved when we were in Edinburgh. I said it's probably one of the best times of my life and I won't forget it. But I can tell you something, it didn't keep me. We're on fire for God as a capital of all Christians. Whatever day we're reading the word of God, we're easy wanting to learn, fellowship, every church, every meeting. But you know, after a few months, my prayer life at downhill, I wasn't reading the Bible so much, I wasn't thanking God so much, I wasn't trusting God so much. And after a while, I was back in the world. I was back in the world. Open Mission was probably one of the best missions I've been to. God definitely made that mission. There were many women received that meetings, but today they're back in the world. See, good times and past experiences will not keep me new. Won't well, keep us, it won't strengthen us. What keeps me new this morning? Is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying, being in the Word, thanking God, just like in Acts 2 42, stand fast in the teaching, breaking the bread, fellowship, and prayer daily in the things of God. In our own strength, we can do nothing, but in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can do everything. You know, Paul was a mighty man of God who trusted God daily. You know, he wrote half the New Testament. He was shipwrecked, he was cold, he was beaten, left for dead, spent over five years in prison. But in every single situation, in every single <coughs> circumstances, Paul trusted in God. He could do all things, he could do all things, because he was content in the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the, the, 
the bit we read in Philippines 4, you know, that was wrote from prison. Paul wrote that letter to the, Philipp uh, the Church of Philippi from prison. 2 Timothy chapter 4 was probably the last, last letter that Paul ever wrote, and that's what it says. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now it waits for me in heaven as a crown of righteousness. Well, history tells us just after that, that Paul was beheaded for his faith. But yet, in all that, Paul continued to preach the gospel, go on missionary journeys. Because he was relying on his own strength, Paul's strength came from the Lord Jesus Christ. And for me, you as fallen brothers and sisters, where strength to go on to endure? Well, not the founding man, but not the founding your friends. Well, I can encourage you, you can encourage me this morning. We can encourage one another to go on, we build one another up. But if you want strength this morning, that strength comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't strengthen you this morning, you can't strengthen me. And how we get strength is to confess, to pray, to trust, to continue reading the word of God, and continue thanking the Lord Jesus Christ daily. And if we do that, then we can endure, we can go on, go on our own strength, and the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask that was to back up, to do this a time of worship this morning. And maybe you're okay this morning. And again, maybe you're facing a situation that you think you can't get through. Maybe you're being persecuted this morning. Maybe you're weak this morning. But you won't find the answer in the world. You won't find it in family or friends this morning. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. God bless you. Amen. You know, you've heard that Lord that's spoken to your life. Let's all stand. A reverence to me, a reverence to God. You know, Bryce is here, he wants to pray with you. Maybe you just need to get your phone to go.